A special thing happens when you produce a wave in a pipe or in a string. You can get what's called a resonant wavelength or simply resonance. And this is caused by producing a wave with the exact right wavelength that when you are, are going to add all the pieces of that wave together, it ends up being a totally neutral sound like that. And so essentially you get this very harmonious sound, hence the name harmonic. And this occurs at what they call a natural or resonant frequency. And so if you have a pipe or a rope, you can get these resonant harmonic wavelengths that have very special qualities about them. In order for a wavelength to be considered resonant, it has to have a node at any closed or tied end and an anti-node at any open or untied end. A node is whenever the waveforms cross like they do there or over here. And notice this is a closed end of that pipe. The closed end requires a node in order for harmonic or resonant wavelengths to be exhibited. And you need an anti-node, which is where the waveforms are as far apart as possible whenever it is the open part of the pipe or the untied end of that string. If you know the nature of your system, then you can calculate the wavelength of these harmonic or resonant wavelengths simply by knowing the length of the chamber. And usually this is done in the case of pipes, where you know how long the pipe is and uh, you know whether it's open or closed at each end. You can also do this with a string that is tied at both ends, such as with a guitar or any string instrument. These are all cases where harmonic resonant wavelengths will appear. And the calculations that you use, if it is closed or tied at both ends or neither end, then you use the formula that the length of the pipe or the length of the overall waveform, for example, the length of the distance between the two ends of the guitar string, is equal to n times lambda sub n divided by 2. And for this, you use n with any value, any integer, 1, 2, or 3. And that will give you all of the various harmonic wavelengths that you'll encounter with that. So if it's closed and tied at both ends or at neither end, then you use this formula. L equals n times lambda sub n times divided by 2. And the lambda here represents the wavelength. Now if it's closed or tied at one end, then you use a different formula. The length of the pipe or chamber equals n times lambda sub n divided by 4. But in this one, you skip every even-numbered integer. So it's only odd-numbered integers, 1, 3, 5, and 7, that can be used to calculate your harmonic or resonant wavelengths in this example where it is tied or closed at only one end. At first glance, these formulas may seem somewhat random and counterintuitive, but I've drawn two illustrations here to show you that there actually is a, a reasoning behind them. And this can also help you remember them if uh, you're forgetting which denominator you should use for each one. And so let's remember that if it has a closed end at both sides, then what you need is a node at both sides. And so the longest wavelength that satisfies those requirements, the longest harmonic, which is also known as the first harmonic, the fundamental, or the resonant wavelength. That will be something that is required to have a node here, and the longest thing that does that is going to be twice as long as the chamber. So if you draw out this whole waveform from when it rises to when it falls to when it comes back to that position, notice that it is twice as long as the chamber. So the fundamental one, which is going to be n times lambda sub n divided by 2, it's going to make sense that the fundamental one is twice as long as the chamber. And so if you were to use n is equal to 1, because it's the first harmonic, lambda sub n is going to be the length of the first harmonic, the wavelength of that harmonic. So if you multiply 1 by that wavelength and then divide it by 2, that will give you the length of the chamber. Now notice that down here in this example where it is open at this end, the first one that satisfies the requirement of having a node here and an anti-node at the open end is going to be a wave that rises to here, comes back to the middle, goes down here, and then reaches this position again. That one is going to be four times as long as the chamber. And so if you were to use this same formula using n as 1, lambda sub n as the wavelength of this, you would have to divide that by 4 in order to get the length of the chamber. 
So it kind of makes sense that if the longest thing that satisfies this requirement of having a node here and an anti-node here, if that thing is four times as long as the chamber, you would have to divide by four. Now the other question, why do you use every integer here and every other integer here? That one is fairly straightforward too. Notice that in red, I've drawn something that is half the fundamental wavelength here. And that in this example where it is closed at both ends, you end up getting a node at this end here, which is what you want. That is something that is half the wavelength of this first fundamental wavelength. Now here, if you're drawing something that is half of the fundamental wavelength, notice that it produces a node at this open end. And that does not satisfy the requirements for resonance. And so that can help you remember that every sort of permutation of this longer one, not every one of those is going to satisfy the harmonic or resonance equation that you need. And so that's why with something that is open at one end or is untied at one end, you end up skipping every even numbered integer. So the next one that will satisfy the requirements for resonance here will be something that goes up and down there and then goes down and up here. That is what satisfies an antinode. But notice that this isn't even close to being half as long as the fundamental. So just remember that if half of your fundamental one doesn't satisfy that requirement for having an antinode here, then you can't just assume that every single integer will yield a harmonic.